hello, hello, good afternoon. I'm guessing, I mean, I'm in Malaysia, so it's afternoon. I'm not sure what time it is where you are if you're international friends. Um, so I've been reading the chats and I am also really tired. Yes, this is a mood here. So I think uh, it's unfortunate that you have so many AS papers back to back, right? So you had maths on Monday and then chemistry is today and physics is tomorrow. So this week is really just a lot of papers together. So please make sure you get, you're getting enough rest, right? You are doing your best. So it's okay to not be perfectly prepared. Okay, what your body and your mind need is some rest and then, you know, just do your best and see what happens after that. But yes, okay, feeling tired is totally normal. So your brain can only carry and hold that many stuff. All right, so as usual, um, I'm not sure whether, hello to new friends or people who are new to the channel. My name is Miss Lee. All right, and if you're wondering why there are no real, like no recent uploads, it's mainly because the pandemic is over and Miss Ellie and I have started going back to school every day. So when we go back to school every day, we kind of like don't really have time to record anything anymore. Because if we're at home, we're free, we can do some recording. But when we're at school and there are other things to, you know, pay attention to, then that's what, that's what happens. But I'm here today and I'm going to answer some questions from you. But uh, my main focus will be to look at the Slido and look at questions that I can answer. So if your question is like, Miss, can you teach this thing again? Well, it is recorded. Uh, so use the search bar from the video channel and then you can read from the recording. Um, I will address mainly focusing on the questions from May, June 2, 2 paper 2, because of, we didn't record anything, lah, simply because there's no coverage there. And also any kind of related question to hopefully cover a large enough breadth. And uh, we will be doing this for Okay, I'll set timer. We'll be doing this for one hour and a half because too much or so brain hand. All right, so appreciate that you are here and that you, you know, come and hang out with us. So we're just doing what we can in the last minute, All right? AMA is ask me anything. Just ask me. Ask. I can choose to not answer, but you can ask. All right. AMA. So it's ask me anything. I will start the question, it's a Q&A session, okay? So I'll start answering the questions from the bottom. All right, rest is important, guys. Your engine breaks down halfway. You, you can't get to what you need. All right, I'm gonna scroll right down to the first question. Let's come first, serve, okay? And uh, I'll try to answer them one by one. So if you have friends or you're unable to watch it right now because of the timing in your country, uh, don't worry. This recording will be available to you at the end of the live stream session. So don't be too, you know, too stressed out about that. So the first question here is, uh, what is the technique for significant answers? Uh, I'm guessing you're asking for significant figures, so I will address the errors and uncertainty later. I'm going to look at the first question. I don't know. I'll proceed from there. And we'll probably do this for an hour and a half or so. So we'll end at Malaysian time, 7.30 p.m. Okay, so we're going to start with 2018, uh, Feb March 18, P22. Okay, as usual, I'm not really looking at the chat. I only look at it once in a while. So if you have burning questions, send them to Slido, but be a bit respectful and don't spam. Nah. Okay. All right, question four. Okay, so I will <clears throat> work through the question. So question four is about stationary waves. Okay, so if you are following along the discussion, wherever you get your past years, uh, this is what we're looking at right now. And normally for waves, uh, I mean, I don't know which part of the question you need help with. So having a part be also helpful. But if not, I'll just discuss the whole question for now. Because I think generally people need help with waves. So sometimes doing A-levels, right, is also being mindful of where your IG studies stops. Because um, IG is a syllabus, IGCSE is a syllabus that has a lot of limitations, meaning there are a lot of things that you actually need to learn so that you're A-level competent, right? 
Anyway, here you are asked to state the condition required for the formation of stationary or standing waves. So this one is pretty standard. What we are looking for is we need two waves traveling in the opposite direction, like this, and the other one traveling like this, and we need them to be identical. Okay, so for more explanation and more uh, pictures, simulation, watch the lectures. Okay, so we need two waves traveling in the opposite direction. And the very important keyword is overlap or meet. Because look, I can have two waves traveling in the opposite direction that uh, totally will not meet. For example, I can have one wave traveling here, and then I have another wave traveling here. They will never meet, law. So they have to overlap and meet. We need two waves, opposite direction, overlap and meeting. This is one mark, okay? The other mark is also to mention that these two waves are identical. But identical how? So means that they have the same frequency and also the same wavelength, okay? So same frequency and wavelength. Frequency, wavelength, and speed. So identical. So whenever we describe waves, right, we describe them based on the terms like frequency and wavelength. So we have to mention, just roughly tell, tell people like, hey, by the way, these two waves have to be identical and they have the same frequency and wavelength. Okay, one mark, one mark. All right, so if it's a three mark question, you may also may, may also want to mention that normally this is done by reflection. So refer to the lecture video. Normally we will have a reflector here. So the incident wave and the reflected wave, this wave will reflect on the wall. So it is mainly done by reflection. Okay, so refer to lecture video. We're going to now look at this CRO. Okay, CRO is also kind of important uh, and you will definitely see a CRO question, if not in your paper two, then in your paper one. So for cathode ray oscilloscope, it's basically just a device we use to trace out or draw out a, a graph or a diagram for us to measure properties of the waves. So the, the way a CRO works is that it basically allows us to measure some wave properties such as wavelength, amplitude, and frequency. You can see all of this like a graph paper. So this is a big graph paper. And it says here that the sound wave have the speed of 330 meter per second and a wavelength of 0 0.18, okay? So this is pretty straightforward. The sound wave, you can use V equal to F lambda and solve your life problems. And uh, to be honest, I'm pretty sure you'll be using this equation tomorrow just to know how. Can't tell the future, but there are only there's only that many equations in waves, right? So if I plug this in, do I even have a code? I do. I have a calculator. <laughs> what is life without your trusty Casio calculator? Am I right? Don't forget to bring your calculator tomorrow. All right, anyway, um, after pressing my answer, this is 1.83 times 10 to the power of 3 hertz. Okay, or if I want to write, then it's 1833 hertz. All right, so I want to point out a few things. And I will say it once, and this is important. A lot of times, students, this one, they need to figure out how many significant figures should I write my answer. So here's the clue. Look at the data given. This 0 0.18 is 2 SF. This 330 is 2 SF. So what should your answer be? 2 SF. Or if you're being extra, if you like being extra, you can write 3. So most of the time, they will stick to 2. So I'm going to stick to 2. 1800 hertz. Okay? Does that make sense? So always remember to refer to the question. The question is like 2SF, 2SF, you follow, la. follow the question. So right now you are asked to determine the time base in second per cm of the CRO. So time base here 
is basically if you think about your wave right what we will trace on the wave up here is displacement and here would be time so this time base is the horizontal axis all right and it wants to know what should the setting be so that one complete cycle is one period here to here is t so what you could do is you could stare back at this one and realize that the whole graph you can draw the midline if you want to to help you orientate your graph and you realize that this entire thing is 1.5 cycle this whole thing is 1.5 t but also how many cm is the whole graph grid one two three four five so this is uh one cm two cm 3cm, 4cm, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8cm is equivalent to 1.5 cycle, 1.5t. I'm going to transfer that down, okay? So right now, the time-based setting is 8cm is equivalent to 1.5t. T. But I guess I need to find T first. So I'm going to find T as 1 over F. So that will be, I guess, 1 over... Teacher, can I put 1800? Can. Can I put 1833? Can. Just write down what you substitute, okay? So what I have now here is 5.56 times 10 to the power of negative 4 seconds. So I'm just going to increase another SF for uh, accuracy okay you can also write this one as 5.5 okay but either way 8 cm is 1.5 t so 8 cm is now equivalent to 1.5 times now 1 over 1800 you can do this too or you can put 5.56 whichever works so i'm going to multiply this one by 1.5 and now i will get 8 cm is 8.33 times 10 to the power of negative 4. So now if I want to find 1 cm, I have to figure out what 1 cm represents. So I'm going to take uh, the answer, divide by 8. Okay, and 1 cm would be 1.04 times 10 to the power of negative 4 second. All right. So what I did was, I look at the trace of the CRO, and I saw that this is one and a half cycle. 1.5 T. And this is equivalent to 8 CM. So what I'm trying to find is, what is the equivalent of 1 CM? Because this is second per CM. So hence, you can conclude the time-based setting is 1.0 or 1.04 times 10 to the power of negative 4 second per cm. Okay, so that's your answer. I mean, you can write 1.04, but I'm going to stick to 2SF. Cool. All right. So sometimes they won't give you a nice number, and that's fine. As long as you leave your answer in 2SF, you're okay. Good to go. All right, so that's it. Part three on 4.1, sketch a new trace uh, by changing the intensity of the sound being halved. Okay, so right now, um, if we want to change the intensity, what we are changing is the amplitude. So start off by thinking or remembering that the intensity is proportional to amplitude square. Okay. So when we sketch a graph like so, the amplitude is here to here. From the equilibrium to the maximum point, this is your amplitude. So if intensity is proportional to amplitude square, remember, ratio is always your best friend. So it doesn't mean that my intensity, what they are saying is if I become I over 2, what will A become? That's basically the question. And sketch that value. 
So I'm going to stick with Rachel, okay? And I guess what I'll do is I'll just make more space for myself. So i is proportional to a squared. So i1 over i2 will be equal to a1 over a2 whole thing squared. Okay. So right now, I know that the intensity is half, so I can take i divide by i over 2, or 1 over 1 over 2. Essentially, same thing. Okay. Now what I need to figure out is what is the original amplitude. So I'm going to go back to the CRO tra trace to figure out what is the original amplitude. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is 1 cm. This is 2 cm. And this will be 2.4 cm. So 2.4 cm is A1, right? So I'm going to place that 2.4 cm inside my A1. And what I'm looking for is A2. Okay, the amplitude of the new wave where the intensity is halved. So on my right side of the equation, 1 over 1 over 2 will be equal to 2. 2 is equal to 2.4 over A2 squared. Okay, so bringing over the square, this is root 2. So then uh, root 2 is 2.4 over A2. And to find A2, that will be 2.4 divided by root 2. Do as many or as little steps that you need to arrive at the answer that A2 is 1.7 cm. I am just doing more steps for people who need a little bit of help in algebra. You may not need to. All right, so basically, if I become I over 2, okay, so the 2.4 cm will become 1.7 cm. So now I need to sketch a new wave with 1.7 cm. Okay, same frequency because I, it says the wavelength is unchanged. So, yep. 1.7, you guys. So where is 1.7? Uh, 1.7 is, I guess, this is two, four, six, seven. It's half a box. So here. And also 1.7 at the bottom. So I'm going to rub away this 1.5 T, okay? Two, three, it's one, one, two, three. Three and a half. Okay, so this is 1.7. This is 1.7. So what I'll do is at the amplitudes, I will plot out where that 1.7 ought to be, which are these points that I'm marking. And what I'll do is I will then join them together in a reasonable looking sinusoidal curve. Yeah, 1.7. Let's go. It's okay if your, you know, your curve is like not perfect, but you just gotta make sure that you consistently hit the 1.7 marker, which is one and a half box. So for paper two and theory paper, remember that you can, you should always plot the accuracy to half a box. This is not paper three. So if you have the same period, it's one mark. If you draw the correct amplitude, it's the other mark. All right. So that's uh. So this is a pretty intensive CRO question. If you need help with CRO, we have recorded a lot of examples. Go refer to them or try more questions on your own. Why is next in part C is standing or stationary waves? So when it comes to stationary wave, what what important skill you need to have is actually to be able to sketch the wave shape or the wave profile. This chapter is a lot about drawing. So if you can draw the wave, then you don't really have a problem. So it says here that uh, we fill this entire liquid, entire tube with liquid, and then we open the tap and the liquid will flow away. Okay. And the liquid drains out at a constant rate. Okay. So the wavelength of the sound from the loudspeaker is given by this. So this is our lambda. And the sound that is uh, heard first becomes much louder when the liquid surface reaches level A. So at level A, I'll hear my first loud sound. First loud sound. Which means at level A, if this is my 
my pipe, right? My air, my my my, my water column, my tube thingy. My wave at level A will be like this. So the close end here is always an empty node. Let me shade. Liquid on this, all the water here, ma. Right? So this one at close end, no space to move. So here must be an a uh, node, sorry, not an empty node. No space to move. This one is node. And then on top here, there's a lot of space to move. This one is empty node. Right? So when the wave particle can travel a lot back and forth, back and forth, that one is empty node. Alright. So right now what we're gonna do is we're going to try to sketch the wave profile like this. And also it then says that the next time, the second loud sound that we will hear is when it's at level B. Second loud sound, so remember the condition, here must be a node, a liquid surface must also be a node. So here is node, here is node. So this means the only way to fit a wave is to draw it this way. So first I have this purple color one, and then I bring the surface level down until I hear a second loud sound. Loud sound here means the wave the required wave will fit in the air column. Okay, there's space for it to fit. So if I want to calculate the vertical distance between level A and B, here to here, let's call this AB. Do you, you do realize that here to here is half a wavelength. It's happened to be lambda over two. So if AB is lambda over two, and we already know what lambda is, so AB would be 0 0.18 divided by 2, which is 0 0.09. Now, again, pay attention. If I leave my answer at 0 0.09, it's very dangerous because it's only 1 SF. 0 0.18 is 2 SF, meaning this thing should also be 2 SF. So please write 0 0.090. Don't let them steal that one mark away from you. Okay, part two. On figure 4.3, label with the letter N, the position of the nodes of the stationary wave. Okay, so if you want to find the position of the nodes, I think I just did. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> one node is here. So in the exam, you don't have to draw the wave shape, but what you need to do is to draw the nodes on level A and level B, like this, label N and N. Okay, and finally, the mass of liquid leaving the tube per unit time is 7.6 gram per second. This is change in mass over change in time. So 6.7 gram in one second. That is what this gram per second means. 6.7 gram in one second. The tube has an internal cross-sectional area of 13 cm square, and the density of the liquid is 0 0.79 gram per cm cube. So if you want to calculate the time taken, it may seem like a bit of a stretch to relate mass and time, but what we need to understand is that if you want it, if you want to move it from level A to level B, I need to drain out this much water. Okay, the amount of water I need to flow is actually this cylinder. Okay, so I start off with what I have. I know the density of the liquid. Okay. And also at the same time, I mean, this is the density. At the same time, I know the change in mass. So let's start with density first. Uh, density here is defined as mass over volume. All right, hopefully not new to you. Okay, and also at the same time, um, from here, if I want to find the volume, density will be mass over, okay, area times the distance from AB. So I need to call this some num some unknown or some constant. Let's call this H. Okay, the height of A to B. Uh, ah, H. All right. So mass is equal to density times area times height. So I can find the mass of the water that is leaving the tube. But I'm very aware that this 0 0.79, what did I put to? 0 
is in gram per cm cube. Okay, so if you need to, we can include the units gram per cm cube. And the area here, let me scroll down a bit, is 13 cm square. Okay, the height, while this height calculated is 0 0.090 meter, this is also equivalent to 9 cm, okay? So I'm just going to put 9.0 cm. Okay, yeah. So the cm cube and the cm square and the cm cancel. So sometimes they can sneakily trick you and then if you forgot to convert, then it's a bit of a sadness situation. So remember to always double check units. It's a fundamental property of all physics students. Check your units. And uh, this answer that I have is 92.43 gram. So meaning the amount of water inside the column AB is 92.43 gram. So we know that the change in mass over time is 6.7. How much mass need to flow out? 92.43. I want to find the time taken, the, the time interval, 6.7. Okay, so I'll take 92.43 divided by 6.7. Then from here, I'll get my time interval as 13.8 seconds. Or if you want to write to 2SF, 14 seconds. Okay, so sometimes you will forget that actually at the end of the day, uh, when things flow out, we can always use density, especially if it's given to us. So I started off the question by using the density and I asking myself, like, okay, density is mass over volume. If I can find the mass, I can find the time because I know one second I lose 6.7 gram. Two second I lose 6.7 times two. Three second I lose 6.7 times three. All I need to know is how much mass did I lose. And to find the amount of mass for the water level to drop from A to B, I just need to find the volume and multiply that by density, like so. All right, so that's it for this question. Let's look at something else. May, June 2, 2, question 2, C. Okay, so after a while, I'll start skipping question, especially if the questions asked are similar. All right, so here's where we're gonna go next. Anyway, if you have any questions, let me see. Oh, question is already on the playlist, yes. So today I'm solo, so basically I may not be able to find the question. So if you try to let me know if the question is on the playlist, that way I don't have to repeat. Oh. We recorded thousands of videos, don't remember. To me, all the question already discussed before in my brain, but that not, may not be true for me. Okay. My mouse was freaking out a bit. But yeah, good call. Thanks. So please try to search the question first before you ask them. And also we are doing this, or rather I'm doing this as a community service. Question 2. Yeah. So there's a limitation to what I can do. I am not Superman. Just like there's a limitation to you as well, and that's okay. All right. So this one, I just want to give people the setting. We have this uh, archer. He's going to shoot projectile motion. So the projectile motion is going to fly up and hit the center of the target. Which I don't really know how it's hitting. I need to calculate, but sure, something like that. Like, okay, like it's going to hit the center of the target. So uh, in the question, we calculate a bunch of stuff. Um, I guess. Oops, let, me, let me briefly run through them. And then we will focus on parts. Okay. So, May, June 2 2, P 2 3. Here we have an archer releasing an arrow towards a target at a velocity of 65 meter per second, and the angle is given. 
So whenever we shoot something at a given angle like this, what is important to do is to split the velocity component to x and y. Because these things are vectors, you see. So if you want to do any stuva or any equation, any kinematics consideration, you have to make sure that all the vectors are parallel. And the vector for acceleration is in this direction. OK? Which means I need to split the vector so that one is you know, vertical. So this one doesn't have the, the, doesn't have the angle. So this will be 65, no angle, so sine contract to borrow. 65 sine 4.3. And the horizontal component will be 65 cos 4.3. They give you a lot of like height and distance, but I'm not too bothered about, about that. I'm going to continue the question. Show that the time taken for the arrow to reach the target is 1.08 seconds. So I have two choices here. Okay, in terms of my STUVA, some people, if you they do enough questions, they can sort of list this down in your brain and then you sort of like don't really need to do this anymore. But if you are not very confident, it's totally fine to do this. We're going to list down the X and Y components again. Okay, so basically we are looking for time, right? And the horizontal displacement, so the distance traveled by the arrow. So the head of the arrow is here, and I'm going to assume that when the arrow hit the target, it's going to look like this. Lah. So the head of the arrow travels 70.0 cm in the horizontal direction. So please make sure to understand that all of these are vectors except time. So when they belong in the same column, they should be parallel to each other. Okay. So that means u, we can take 65 cos 4.3 because this arrow is horizontal so is this arrow horizontal okay and the acceleration is zero teacher how you know the acceleration is zero because there is no horizontal force there's no forces acting on the arrow in the horizontal direction so no horizontal force and if the acceler acceleration is zero it means that the initial and final speed is the same wait a minute i can use this to find t correct so you can use the equation with s and u, all right? So I know people have this habit of remembering this triangle. And as a physics teacher, I'm slightly annoyed because you can't always use this triangle. If you don't know this triangle, even better, I don't want to teach you. So if you want to use the triangle, can you have to make sure that acceleration is zero. Only if acceleration is zero. So in this case, oh, teacher, the acceleration is zero, horizontal, ah, yeah, the can, sure. But I prefer to default back to this equation that I can copy from the formula sheet. Ut is half at squared. You want to keep this equation handy and easy to recall so that if you need it, you know it's there for you. Formula sheet. And then now your a is zero, so this thing cancel off. That's how you got your s is ut. Ah, your triangle, ah, happy now? Okay, so the horizontal is 70. Uh, the horizontal distance, the horizontal speed is 65 cos 4.3. Then you will multiply that by t, so you can find your t now, which should be 1.08 second. Okay, so remember how when we started today's discussion, we talked about significant figures. So you notice that I left my answer in three significant figures, not just because the question gives me the answer in three significant figures, but you realize that 70.03 SF, 1.663 SF. One, that's why your final answer must also be 3 SF. Okay, can just follow the question. Question give 3, you follow 3. All right, so that's T. Calculate the height of the center of the target above the ground. I'm going to label this height as H on my diagram. Okay, which I will do so now. So the height of the center of the target, okay, no? center of the target from the ground. So from here to here is my H. Okay. Remember that your arrow starts from here. The arrow hit. And your arrow hit will end here. So if you want to consider the vertical displacement, H is not your vertical displacement. H is the vertical distance traveled 
from the starting height to the ending height here to here this distance is your sy i mean you can call it whatever you want but sy okay and in fact this sy is in the downward direction that's why you will expect to get a negative but regardless this is the sy that i want to find because if i can find sy i can find h and you might be asking me teacher how would you find h well i have the entire height 1.66 right so i just need to subtract that with 1.66 all right, so I'm going to start first by looking for SY. I know T, this is 1.08 second. Okay, uh, U would be 65 sine 4.3 degree. And once again, I want to point out that all of these vectors are vertical. See, parallel, parallel, and eventually I will put acceleration as G parallel. Okay, so notice that this 65 sine 4.3 is opposite direction these two are opposite direction so if they're opposite direction somebody needs to be negative and in this case i'm going to put downward as negative somebody has to be negative another one is positive right so we'll follow the general convention so this will be negative 9.81 or negative g i don't have information about v so i'm going to use the equation with no v which coincidentally happens to be the same equation that i used in the previous part all right so i will substitute that in now S is UT plus half AT squared. So I'm looking for SY. Uh, U would be 65 sine 4.3. Time is 1.08 plus half negative 9.81, 1.08 square. So from here, you can find your SY, which by the way, it should be negative. So a hint that something went wrong, if let's say, for example, you've forgotten to uh, write a negative in front of your G, which can happen sometimes, you will, you may get a positive number and you shouldn't proceed as usual, lah, right? You should stop and like, hey, maybe something is wrong here that I should, you know, pay attention to. All right, so this one, I got negative 0 0.458 because I'm still maintaining my 3SF. So hence, H will be 1.66 meter minus 0 0.458. And that would be 1.20. Okay. So again, the arrow was here. It's going to collide here at the center of your target. The height of the arrow to the ground was 1.66 meter. Okay. The height of the target from the ground is H. The height of the arrow, how much it has fallen is SY. So that's why this one is negative, but magnitude-wise, it's 0 0.458 meter. And this H is not drawn to scale, 1.2 meter. <laughs> okay, uh, not drawn to scale. I just simply sketch it. Okay, but you get the idea. So the reason negative here is not, you shouldn't substitute a negative in, it's just for you to know that the arrow is below the initial position. Okay, so let's move on to part C. So this is an example of how you use the kinematics equation. List down your STUVA, because it helps you organize your brain. Choose a suitable equation. So for example, for Y, right? If let's say for this one, you know, I choose the equation V square is U square plus 2AS. It's not suitable because why? I don't have V, unknown can I find V? Sure, it's an extra step and I don't like to do extra work without extra marks. So I'm going to use the other one. Now. All right, it allows you to choose the equation. Number two, you have to make sure all these things are parallel. And if they're opposite direction, you need to assign an appropriate negative sign. All right. Then after that, after selecting, it's just using the equation and a bit of practice. So part C, by considering energy changes, state and explain how the kinetic energy of the arrow 
as it hits the target compares to the initial kinetic energy immediately after release. A numerical calculation is not required. So what we're going to do is we are trying to find energy changes by using energy changes we are asked to explain how the final kinetic energy of the arrow so basically how does the ke final here compare to the ke initial like so when they say compares there are only three answers that you can possibly write correct you can either say k okay i'm going to write the possibility initial ke greater than final initial ke equal to final initial ke less than final honestly there's only these three when you compare things right you're comparing two things the kinetic energy uh as it hits the target and the initial kinetic energy immediately after release so it's either one is bigger than the other one or they are the same okay and the question is trying to help you by directing your thoughts to energy changes so i guess the question would be when your arrow travel from the starting to the ending position what is the change in energy experienced by the arrow so if you have a good sense of what every energy is you would think to yourself well the arrow is below the original position so uh, if you're thinking about gravitational potential energy you are right the gpe will decrease okay so i'm going to write this down as a main idea first gravitational potential energy of the arrow decreases when it hits the target or right before it hits the target and by conservation of energy this energy has to convert to something GPE is converted to KE. Air resistance or effects of air resistance is neg negligible. Okay, of course, in the exam, you're only going to write this once, so please write in full term. Okay, converted to KE. So, hence, this is the explanation. So, you can say, hence, the final kinetic energy is more than or greater than initial kinetic energy all ke has increased so one mark is when you mention gpe decreases and then this m1 and then you can say final is more than initial a1 and how do i know gpe decreases because arrow is below the initial position or you can also see from the drawing right Okay, so that is part C for you. All right, next. Anyway, I'm going to look at the chat on and off to see if there's any question, but I'll only be able to see the last few. If you're talking to each other, they'll be great. Anyway, there's 67 people here. Wow. How's life? Actually, I should do the due diligence to search for me. Okay, so I don't think we've recorded this, or at least I can't find it. So we shall assume don't have. So the next one is about circuits. So again, I'm going to focus on a range of questions. So we've hopped to mechanics and we did some stationary wave and CRO. 
we're going to move on to drift speed or i is equals to nab we're going to look at the question together but let me go and dig out the question first anyway how's everyone doing are you okay anyone Winter nineteen paper twenty two. You know, strangely in May June two two there's no polarization question in paper two. Who knows what will happen in October, November? So for winter 19 P22, I do not see a drift velocity equation, but I can try to do question seven for you. It's not a drift velocity question. Okay, it's a nuclear physics question. <clears throat> so for nuclear physics, uh, what you need to know, it's not that a lot, okay? I'll probably later see if I have time to cover it or that question appears, but normally, they may give you a reaction like this, and you definitely need to know how to balance your nuclear numbers, okay? So, for example, you need to know that alpha is 4,2 helium, and beta, there are two types. The beta minus is 0, negative 1. The beta plus is 0, positive 1. So in this case, it is alpha 4,2. And to balance the chemical equation, 2, 3, 8 will be 2, 3, 4 plus 4 and 94 is 92 plus 2. So the number of protons is 92, and the number of neutrons is actually 234 minus 92. That will be 142. Bonus question, balance the chemical equation, since you were all talking about the chemistry paper just now. Part B, calculate the number of plutonium-238 nuclei, this product, I mean this reactant, that must decay in one second to produce this mass watt of power. So power, remember, is energy over time, which means the amount of energy that I need, E, is 0 0.15 Joule, because you want one second, right? Yeah. PT. 0 0.15 times 1, 0 0.15, okay? No need to write also, never mind. So how much, how much energy, or rather, how many particles do I need to create this kind of energy? Okay, so if we go back to this equation, and you look at this, this one is the energy released for every plutonium-238 nucleus. So one nucleus, 5.6 mega evo. Basically, now we're asking how many nucleus? Well, first things first, Joule and mega evo cannot be friends. We need to convert somebody. I'm going to convert mega evo, okay? So 5.6 mega evo is equal to, first let's had sent, uh, settle the mega. Mega is 10 to the power of 6, right? Converting evo to joule is a matter of just dividing or multiplying by the electronic charge. The value of electronic charge can be found in your table of constants, but I will write here for you, negative 19 Coulomb. Which means now I should divide this thing by 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. And my answer will be in Joule. Not multiply. Multiply. Divide. Divide. Sorry. Multiply. Yeah. 
because the number is too big, you can tell. Hmm. 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. Multiply. So this will be equivalent to 8.96 times 10 to the power of negative 13 joule. So hence, if you want to find the number, one nucleus is this amount of energy. How many nucleus to get this amount of energy? Divide, no? Okay. So hence, the number of nucleus that I need to give me 0 0.15 Joule will be 0 0.15 divided by 8.96 times 10 to the power of magnetic 13. So 0 0.15 divided by 8.96 negative 13. 1.7 times 10 to the power 11. We need a lot of particles, okay? So this one is just actually a ratio question. 1 is to 8.96 times 10 to the power negative 13 joule. N is 0 0.15 joule. Find N. Okay. So the main thing here is to remember your unit conversion. E vote is a nice number. 5.6 is a much nice number to handle than something times 10 to the power negative 13. That's why we have a conversion to convert nuclear numbers or nuclear amount of energy to E volt. But the conversion is borrowing the electronic charge, a little bit like converting radian to pi and pi to radian. Okay, it's a convenience thing. At least you can see it that way for now. All right, so remember this conversion, E volt to joule. Joule is always the smallest number, so you will multiply by the electronic charge. Okay, so that's it for question seven. Let's go, next one. An um, appropriate significant figure when it comes to uncertainty questions, we'll, we'll do one later. Hopefully someone will ask. Omic and non-omic conductor potential dependence. Okay, noted. Work done by gas removed from the syllabus. Unknown. I don't know whether it's removed from the syllabus. I will assume it's still in the syllabus until three to, there's at least three to four sittings where, okay. at least there's three to four sittings where I don't know, I don't know whether they are asked or not. Does that make sense? Meaning I, they didn't mention that it is removed, but they also didn't mention that it is staying. So I will assume that it is there until later. Okay, so that's my response to work done on or by the guests. All right. Um, harmonic motion is not in the syllabus. Mellor's Law, go read, go watch the lecture video. Um, I'm not quite sure what revision you need, so refer to the question. What happens to momentum when forces increase? Okay, let's do one of these. Then. Momentum. Mellor's Law, go try, go watch the video lah. The video, it should be enough. There's a slight uh, notation error in the video, but the equation is correct. It's just that when I did the algebra, I moved things wrongly. Use your algebra to make that correction, okay? Okay, we're going to look at, maybe I'll choose one from here. Winter 19. Paper 2, 1. Question 4. I don't see a momentum question in question four. I also feel like this one may have been recorded already. Let's see. Then paper two three. Mm 
Okay, so for people in the chat, if you're asking me to explain this and explain that, the videos are more reliable than me. Okay, I think I will do paper two, three. So we're going to focus a lot of today on problem solving more than discussion of content because the, re the videos are already there. And science has not changed since then. Okay, so occasionally, actually, I don't think the force is the force here changing. Okay, fine. The force is changing because the acceleration is changing. But I'm not quite sure uh, what is the source of that confusion. But I guess we can try this question because it's a bit different than what we have done previously. So this kind of question, right? Um, when I see a moto, uh, I immediately, in case you don't know, we are doing winter 19 paper 2, 3, question 2. All right. So here, what they're asking you is to define work done. Okay, so at least for the purposes of AS, you can define work done as FS for now until you go university. But this is the product, product, multiply my product of force and distance moved or distance traveled in the direction or same direction or parallel of the force. So basically, to get this mark, not only you need to mention that it is the product of force and distance. Okay, you also need to mention that this one is in the direction of the force, or you could say F and S are parallel. Okay, same direction. Next, we have a lift and a which is one point three kilonewton. So this is the W and uh, connected by a cable to a motor as shown in figure 2.1. So a cable will rotate and lift up the elevator, sure. A constant frictional force of 2 kN acts on the lift when it is moving. So there's 2 kN force and there is the weight 13 kN. The variation with time t of the speed of the lift is shown. So the speed increase, maintain a constant speed, and then brakes slow down and stop, presumably stopping to let passengers in or out of the lift. Ah. Determine the acceleration of the lift between zero and three seconds. Work done by the motor to, re to raise the lift. Sure. And then later we'll be talking about efficiency. Okay, so let's do the easy one first. To find acceleration is equal to gradient of VT graph. So we're going to look for the gradient from 0 to 3 seconds. Okay. So by the time we reach the third second, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 2.4. So from 0, increase to 2.4 in the time of 3 seconds. 2.4 minus 0. So this will be 0 0.8. Again, uh, 0, 2 as F. Uh. Okay. So this one always is 2SF. Why? Uh, again, question no? I mean, if you want to, you could say this is 2SF. Sure, this is 3SF. You can write your final answer as 3SF, but normally we follow the least SF or plus one. Okay, it's a general rule of thumb. Work done by the motto between 3 to 6 seconds. W is force times distance. Okay, so right now, from 3 to six seconds, I need to figure out what exactly is the work done by the motor. So we can see the speed is constant, right, from three to six seconds. So work done by motor have to help one of these three things. Either it changes the kinetic energy meaning the motor is accelerating or decelerating or slowing down or speeding up or whatever. So either change Ke, change gravitational potential energy, or 
do work against friction, I put in bracket here, against friction. And what that against friction looks like would be, means it means that the energy is lost as heat. So we know that definitely there is friction. So if you want to take force times distance, this must be force of the motor times distance. Let's go back to the question. What are the forces acting on the leaf or the cable? Hmm. All right, so we have weight, 13 kilonewton. We have frictional force. Since the leaf is moving upwards, then obviously the frictional force is moving downwards. 2.0 kilonewton. To maintain constant velocity, there has to be a tension in the cable. Okay? So if I want to have constant, constant velocity, there here, this section here, constant speed. So what is your net force or your resultant force? Zero. So to have zero resultant force, to balance the weight and the friction, this must be 13 plus 2, which is 15 kilonewton. So this is the force of the motor, which is translated to the tension on the string that is pulling the object up. So the force that you should be using is 15. If you are always very confused about what force to do, uh, you can draw the force diagram, okay, and pull information from the question. Is the net force zero? How do I know net force zero? Ke doesn't change. Another way to look at it is every single one of these energy changes must involve a force. For example, GPE involves the force weight. Loss as heat involves the force friction. Let me uh, just so you can see, involve the force friction. So one involve weight, one involve friction. Then Ke, eh? Ke has no change because there is no net force, no resultant force. That means this force of the motor must be a combination of weight and friction. Okay. Second thing, distance. How do we find distance? Well. Thank goodness we know that the, the the area under the graph of the velocity time is distance. This is S. Okay, so if you know this one is S, then you can just plot everything together. You know, and, uh, so the force needed will be thirteen plus two times ten to the power of three newton. Okay, so this is the force of motor. Work done by the motor will be the force of the motor. Distance traveled would be the area under the graph. So the velocity is 2.4 and you will travel at 2.4. 2.4 for three seconds, this area. So 2.4 times three. Sure, you can find them separately. You can write everything together. I prefer writing everything together. Lah. So this will be 1.1 times 10 to the power of five. Okay, so it's always useful, especially if you come from IG background, to draw the Sankey diagram or the energy transfer diagram. At least you know the motor do work for what, right? What energy is being increased right now? Oh, work done by the motor to increase GPE, 13 kilonewton, and to overcome friction, 2 kilonewton. There's a correlation one. All right, finally, part two. The motor has an efficiency of uh, 67%, and the tension in the cable is 1.6 times 10 to the power of 4, or in other words, 16 kilonewton at 2.5 seconds. Okay, 
determine the input power. So think of the fact that the motor has efficiency of 60%. So this efficiency is no. So efficiency is equal to output over input. And what does this output do? This output actually, uh, depending on the question. So in this case, definitely we will increase GPE. Definitely there is work done against friction. But at 2.5 seconds, is there an increase in kinetic energy? Let's go back and stare at the graph. Oh no, 2.5 seconds. 2.5 is somewhere here. So there is actually, I mean, the the car or the, sorry, the, the cable or the lift is still accelerating. So there's also a change in kinetic energy. Or in this case, velocity is increasing, increasing kinetic energy. So we haven't arrived at three seconds yet. The speed or the kinetic energy is still increasing. So this one becomes a bit of a pain. Okay, to find all this input requires a lot, right? So what you can do is all of this is done by 16 kilo Newton tension. To increase GPE, I take 13 kilo Newton. To do work against friction, I take 2 kilo Newton. Okay, now 13.2, then to increase KE, this is 1 kilo Newton. All of this is by 13 kilo Newton. This is the force of the motor. It is bigger than the previous one. And if I want to find that input power, I can take force times velocity. Because at 2.5 seconds, that is a way to bypass all of this. Can you calculate all of them separately and put it together? Sure, but why do so much work? I have everything already. So 16 times 10 to the power of 3. And the speed at 2.5 seconds, let me go back to the graph. 2.5, the speed happens to be 2 meter per second. So I'll put 2.0 here. And at the end of the day, this one would be 32 or 3.2 times 10 to the power of 4 watt. This is, uh, sorry, this is output power, my bad, output. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll look for the efficiency. So the efficiency or the output over input times 100% is 67%. So in this case, if I want to find the input power, I will take the output power, which is 3.2 times 10 to the power of 4, divided by 0 0.67. Okay, in this case, I'll get my input power as 4.8 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay, yeah. so this motor, right, when it comes to efficiency, the motor itself inside that certain component in the motor, maybe some wheels, maybe some gear, maybe some circuit, and in that motor itself, some energy is lost to heat. So if I really want to draw the energy conversion, here is how it will look like, okay? So maybe, let's say, for example, you, you are talking about a uh, electric motor. So in the electric motor, um, the electric power this is the input power, 100%. Let me zoom out. Okay, I do not zoom out. 100%. 67% is your useful output. And then this 33% is lost as heat. This 33% is gone. Loss as heat. In the motor, what happened in the motor? Don't know. Some gear, some circuit, some resistance, something like it's lost. Okay, out of the 67%, some of it will be used to increase the kinetic energy of the leaf. Some of it definitely will be used to increase 
GPE of the lift because the lift is going up and some of it is lost to work done against the 2 kilonewton friction. This heat, how many percent is not calculated in the question because the efficiency for 60% is for the motor itself, not for the leaf. So there's the motor efficiency and then there's the leaf efficiency as well, there's the whole system. So this is what is happening in the electric motor. Okay. Uh. All right, part three. Stay and explain whether the increase in GPE from of the lift from zero to seven is less than the same or greater than the work done by the motor. Of course, it's going to be less, right? Because the work done, look, this is the work done by the motor. Some of it go to GPE, sure, but you know, a lot of it is lost to heat. So confirm it's less than already. So I'll say um, the increase in GPE is less than work done by motor. You could say the KE got no change, sure, but there's friction. Okay? Since there is work done against friction and energy is lost to heat. Nah, the leaf get hot, maybe the body of the leaf get hot, maybe some gear in the leaf, I don't know, something lah. There will be loss, always, there's always loss in energy in terms of heat. It's called entropy. It always happens everywhere, all the time. Okay, we have half an hour. Maybe I should speed run a bit on the other ones. Parallel circuit with a wire down the middle. Can find that question and ask, that'll be better. Okay, uncertainty question. Mm, have you tried watching the recording? For uncertainties. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, one. Okay, let me read the chat a bit. How the leaf is moving upwards if the weight and friction combine are 15 kilonewton? Why can't it move upward? There's a force in the motor. The motor exert a force. Where did I get 16 kilonewton? 1.6 times 10 to the power of 4 is 16 kilonewton. Yes, we bring bring a projector. Always bring a projector. I don't know if work done by the gas is removed or whether it's still in the syllabus. The syllabus is unclear. Can we just assume it's still there? Always better to learn a bit more, right? Okay, so I'll do uns I'll do uncertainty as the last question. Uh, let's see, diffraction physics. There is no electric field questions. You should focus. Which chapters should we focus on? Uh, we should focus on the chapters that you are confident in, that you have enough XP experience point. Which one are you more experienced in? More confident in? Do that. Polarization in detail. Watch video. Watch video. Equations of motion is done. Question 6C for May, June 2, 2. Okay, I'll do the May, June 2, 2. This one feels like a circuit question. Baryon and I don't know, I don't understand certain questions, so I'm just going to skip that. What is the technique to solve paper 2 questions? You should go to the question that you are familiar with first. Start with what you know to build up your confidence. 
moments. You can do some, you can do some moments. I'm just gonna put it here. We appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Help of the best way to repay me and Miss Ellie is to go and help a friend. You know, like when you're really lost and then you go watch a video and go like, wow, I got it. Thank you, Miss Ellie. Thank you, Miss Lee. Okay, pass it on. Go help a friend. Potential divider circuits are a bit tricky. Okay, I'll go and find the potential divider circuits. Okay, I think I'll stop here for now. Potential divider circuit. Okay, let's look at uh, May, June 2, 2, P, 2, 3 first. Let's it's more recent. The question is more recent. Uh, I read somewhere in the chat, someone mentioned that, hey, Cambridge recently has changed the way they ask questions. That's true. Not so much for paper two, but for paper four, yes. Paper four is so different these days. But we'll worry about that when you do your paper four. Okay, part C. Ah, yeah, this is a very nice bonus question, you guys. This is like an IG question. Okay, we just want to do part C, yeah? Okay, so uh, summer 22P23. So sometimes they'll give you a circuit and then maybe you haven't seen it before. Maybe you've seen it before, but don't worry. As long as you know how the circuit behave, you'll be fine. Right now you have two resistor and a bunch of ammeters and two switches and a power supply. Sure. And it says that the reading on X is one ampere when S1 is open and S2 is closed. Sure, S1 open, S2 closed. So if S1 open, right, you can assume this whole thing is not there. I know you can't do this in the actual exam paper, but you have to like tell your brain that this one doesn't exist. It's not participating because it's disconnected. It's not part of the circuit. I didn't close the switch, okay? And now you are asked to complete the table. So, sure, sure. Um, right now, we don't have any other information besides the relative ratio of uh, resistance and the reading of the ammeter when S1 is open and S2 is closed. So when S1 open, whoa. when S1 open and S2 close, this is my circuit. I have my battery. I have a resistor 2R and I have a bunch of emitters but that's the main idea and this current is 1.0 ampere. There. What happens to the reading on, okay, let me let me connect the, the emitter, reading on Y your one ampere will flow like that, like that, like that, come back. It doesn't go through Y at all. So the reading of Y would be zero. My favorite number, zero. What about the reading on Z? Well, reading on Z will be the same as the reading on A. Okay, and the reason, the reason why it's the same as the reading on A is because whatever current that flows through X will flow through Z as well. Same current, right? Same current, it's the same thing. There's only one way, there's only one loop. Looks like this. Okay, 1.0. Done. Okay. Close S1 and open S2. Okay, sure. So if I close S1 and open S2, my circuit will be looking like this. And again, if it helps your brain, let's assume this one is not. Hmm, now the current flow like that. So whatever is on X will be on Y, right? Okay. So here's a question. This one, okay, I will write down first. Huh? S1 open, S2 closed. And now what I'm drawing is S1 closed, S2 open. Okay. I have circuit 
a bunch of meters, but also resistor R. Same battery, half the resistance. Easier for current to flow, right? So the current here would now be 2.0 ampere. Half the resistance, what? So the current will be double. If cannot, ah, never mind, slowly. We can use V equal to IR. Let's say this one is V. Okay? So from here, you have V is equal to 1 times R. So V equal to R, okay? And then this is the same battery, so this is still V. You know, this is 2R, my bad. Yeah. So from here, V is equal to 2R. Sure. For this, for the second case, V is equal to IR again. You are looking for I, so I'm just going to call this I2. Your R is R, and your V2 is 2R. Same battery. Oops, I highlighted the wrong 2R, this R. Put inside is the same battery. So from here, you can get I2 is 2, okay? Or you can see here, from here to here, what is going on is resistance is halved. So current double. Easier for current to flow, all right? So X will be 2 ampere, Y will be 2 ampere, Z will be 0. 2.0, 0, 2.0, 2.0, Okay, and the reason why Z is zero is because there is no current here. I mean, no, no connection. Switch is not close. All right, and finally, we're now going to close both switches. Okay, so close both. Okay, if closing both, then here's what's going to happen. I close these and I close this. So if I check out my circuit, right, one looks like this, and the other one, which I'm gonna use blue, I guess, will flow in S2 this way. Okay, so the color that I'm shading is corresponding to the color of the circuit that I draw, okay? So I realized that this means if I close both switches, R and 2R is in parallel. How do I know there's a parallel connection? You realize that this junction here is a split. So if there's a split in the current, it means that the R and 2R is parallel. Which means I can actually calculate the effective resistance. That will be equal to 1 over R plus 1 over 2R inverted or 1 over effective resistance. So let's bring it together. This one will be R plus 2, so the here is 2R and 2 plus 1, so this is 3. Look, if this kind of fraction or, again, this is for you if you need a bit of algebra help, you can factorize the R. So this will be 1 plus half. So 3 over 2. Yeah. Anyway, whichever works for you. So I'll bring it together. Together is 2R. So up here, I'll multiply by 2. This will be 2 plus 1. Okay, so 1 over effective resistance, which means the effective resistance will be 2R over 3. Oh, interesting. Can we use V equal to IR? Can. In fact, this circuit is going to look like this. Now we have the same power supply, V, but this resistor here is a not very convenient 2R over 3. I combine them together. I combine the green and the blue together. Okay, so that will be 2R over 3. So I need to find the current now. Teacher, can I V equal IR? I can. You can always V equal to IR. Okay, so now I want to find the third current, I3, third case. The total resistance I have is 2R over 3. And remember, we did the background work of V equal to 2R. 
if you can use ratio like r is half i is double go ahead and use ratio if not you just substitute lah v equal to 2r you put the 2r here so once again the r and r can cancel and then you will multiply so what we are, what we are multiplying is this out of screen let me check not yet okay great so what we are multiplying is three there'll be six divide by two is i3 so i3 is equal to three and p so the current the total current flowing through here is 3.0 amp which means the current flowing through here is 3.0 ampere so this is 3 ampere but this 3 ampere reach this junction it needs to split into two how would the splitting occur the resistor is ratio at r to 2r right so when we share the current the small resistor will get more current this will take 2 ampere this will take one ampere what well, teacher so fast i cannot okay never mind the potential because they are parallel right parallel so the potential difference v across r is equal to v across 2r the potential difference is the same so i'll start here let me label them for you now let's say this is vy because it's resistor uh, uh meter y and this is vz because they are parallel vy equal vz so the current in y times r is equal to the current in z times 2r r and r can cancel so what do you have left from here you have iy over iz is equal to 2 over 1 so the current in y would be 2 ampere the current in i don't know what else z would be one ampere okay so y would be two and z would be one three two one certain people may not need to show that many working i'm just showing everything but um generally speaking this one is really testing your understanding of what is series and what is parallel okay so let me summarize the question a bit so i think it's needed um I, if we don't have time to cover momentum and diffraction grating you can always refer to the videos that we've recorded okay so the first thing is to identify that when we connect s1 you have r so i'm going to list down the effective resistance I wonder it would be even better if I just throw the circuit down there. BRB. Let me crop the circuit. Ah, yes. And put here. So we can see. And I can doodle on the table. Yay. All right. Let's go. So the key thing is to realize that all of these have different effective resistance. So what will help in your brain is that for your brain to consolidate everything. This effective resi resistance is irrelevant or infinite because all the switches are open, so we don't have to talk about it. When you close S1 and open S2, effective resistance is R. When you close S2 and open S1, the re effective resistance is 2R. When you close both, this will be 1 over r because of parallel plus 1 over 2r inverted which will be 3 over 2r so now we need to think about the current ratio is your best friend 1 ampere resistance r okay if the effective uh yeah s1 is open you know it S1 is open, S2 is closed. They are open and closed along. S1 open, S2 close. Yes, so this is 2R, my bad. S1 close, S2 open. Mm, this is R. Okay, done. So ratio again is your best friend. Double resistance, 1 ampere. 
less resistance to MP. Okay, so in other words, when I go from here to here, I times two, inversely proportional. No? Here to here, I divide by two. Which brings us to think about here to here. And the reason why I can do this is because V is equal to IR, V is constant. So I is inversely proportional to R. Meaning when this one increase two times, this one should decrease two times so that V doesn't change, hence inversely proportional. Regardless, when I jump from R to 3 over 2, okay, what am I doing here? You could say multiply, I cannot, we multiply 3 over 2. So if here we multiply 3 over 2, then from here to here this jump, I have to multiply by, or rather I have to divide by 3 over 2 which is equivalent to multiply by 2 over 3. Divide by 3 over 2. Yeah, so this would be 3 MP. Can I? So here is generally how I fill in one, which will then now make it quite easy to continue the story. So that will save you some time. But that is only if you have experience with the question before. Say you don't have, you may have to allocate a bit more time to go through this process of redrawing the circuit. A lot of times the experience are supposed to happen when you prepare for the exam or as you learn the topic. So it's not something, it's not expected for this to be totally fresh and brand new in your brain when you first encounter it. Although I'm explaining it to you as if you first encounter it. So what will be useful is actually for you to have discussion with friends or people or your teachers about what is going on and whether your idea is right or not. By adjusting different switch on closing different switches, what I'm adjusting is the effective resistance. And when I change the effective resistance, I can easily use ratio. If I divide by 2 on one side, I'll multiply by 2 on the other side. If I multiply by 3 over 2 on one side, I will divide by 3 over 2 on the other side. Okay? So, yep. So I think that's that's I think that's it for now. For this one. And the rest is just of course there's the other part where you need to do some branching here and here. Alright. Is it three over two or two over three? Ah, two over three. This one. It's time for dinner. 2 over 3. So this is 2 over 3. No wonder the numbers didn't feel right. Okay, sure. Times 2 over 3. Just repeat only. It's a calculation error. So this one will be divided by 2 over 3. Yep. Okay. So remember to use ratios if you know how to use them. If not, you can slowly substitute that is provided you have the time because it is quite long, the paper. Yep, thanks for telling me. 2 over 3 R. Will I be conducting more of such live sessions? Hmm. Um, I know that there's quite a lot of uh, inquiry about tuition but currently miss ellie and i it's a bit like a lot of work <laughs> and no time so whatever time we have we give it to you and also our students and then we also need to keep some time for ourselves and our life and friends that we care about okay so until things change i think this is the best that we can offer at the moment but i'm glad you find this useful because at the end of the day a lot of the learning is done on your own all right so i this one, the printout, I will throw into the chat later. But, uh, yeah. I don't know what is going to come out. And if I know, I will sell that. I will sell the answer. I will sell, I will sell the questions, man. I don't know. <laughs> Physics will come out. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. If you know, 
tell me what's coming out tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> mm, okay, so I'm going to just roughly look at questions that I can answer quickly. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, the notes uh, took a while to for us to do. Okay, so you have saved my exams, learned my whole syllabus. Well done, you've learned the whole syllabus on your own. You are busting as well, right? You put in so much effort in your study. Okay, so the legend is both ways. Okay. So, questions from Resultant Force. Favorite Indomie flavor? I don't really have one. I prefer ramens that are spicier. The spicier, the better. I'll buy it too. Share it with me. I don't know what's coming out. I don't know. Physics is coming out. There's probably some drag force question hiding somewhere because that's their favorite. Um, for waves, they'll probably ask stationary interference or diffraction grating, whichever they want. I don't know. Stationary wave interference diffraction grating, one of the above. Phase difference and part difference, all of this, right? There's a lot in the live sessions of your seniors. Miss, how do I access the live sessions of my seniors? Ah, good question. Come and show me. So there are actually a lot of questions that we have already covered. And uh, hmm. I think what you can do is we can scroll down and hopefully we're putting it in the list. I have no idea. Can I put it in the list? Ah, there we go. Okay, so you click on past live stream. Okay, and let's say you want did I click on past live streams? This one? Yes. Can I not see? Sorry, a boomer problem. Uh, da, da. Okay, so I guess you have to click sideways. But anyway, so what you can do is, uh, I mean, look for the paper that you want. So I generally do it for paper four. I do it for most of the theory papers. But uh, you can look for the live streams. I guess maybe a search of AMA would help. So you go and find the past live streams, and then what you need to do is uh, just go and look at the PDF that I upload at the end of the live, live stream. Uh, for example, this is the old one, five months ago. Oh, it's me five months ago. Okay, anyway. So you can just maybe look at the PDF printout. And then you figure out uh, which one. Uh, see, teacher, I want to look, I want to know governometer, why potential difference zero. Somebody asked this some time ago. Okay, go and watch the recording. It's the same Miss Lee. Different hairstyle, different hair color, same Miss Lee. Teacher, what about part difference there? Someone asked already to so go and watch law. Okay. Cool. So that would be helpful, I guess. I hope. I don't know. But uh, there's a limitation to what I can do today. All right. Um, what else? If I write identical wave, uh, preferably not two, so be a bit more specific. Um, inclined plane is recorded in chapter five. Is it five or four? Five in old, four in new. Recorded in chapter four. So you can refer to that. Polarization, all of this is already recorded. So a lot of it is inside the recording. And uh, and yeah, I think one last thing I want to point out. I'll just look at the questions that I can answer. I think the only advice I can give you is to have enough sleep. Do I have A2 tuition? Okay, for tuition inquiries, I don't have any right now. I haven't planned yet. And also, you are all over the world. What time to have tuition? If I have it at this time, it's 3 a.m. for you. That's not healthy. I do not recommend staying up to 3 a.m. Although based on the stats, some of you watch videos at very strange hours of the night. What's your favorite time to watch videos and learn physics? Let me know in the chat. What's the best time for you? Do we need to remember lambda for EM wave? Yes, we need to remember lambda for EM waves. Or it's just one mark and you can burn the one mark. For me personally, I'm not really good at remembering stuff, so I just can't okay, whatever. 
4 a.m. because it's not happening. Miss Lee need to sleep over already, okay? So to find tuition, I, I don't know when is the best time. Maybe you can let me know in the chat. I'm I this round is definitely not, but I'll feel about it. I normally get really confused. There is no key solving circuits, right? Okay, so later I'll give you an overall of paper two. But generally solving circuits is like a puzzle. Physics is a puzzle. Circuits more so. Um, if you if you can understand the puzzle, then all of it is more or less the same equation. But if you can't, then you will feel that they're all different equations. And how to arrive at that understanding is by practice. And if you don't have time to practice, then focus on what you are already good at for now. Because a lot of things is, year, is time, practice and time. What does it mean quarter of a cycle later? May, June 2, 2, P, 2, 1. Okay, maybe I can answer this one. Question five. Propeller tension question all recorded. If you it'll be helpful if like some of you can just direct your friends to where the recordings are. Quarter cycle later. Where is the quarter cycle question? Oh. Okay, so we need to understand this, right? You you need to understand how stationary wave works. So I'm going to, instead of loading a simulation, which by the way, you can find in, uh, in the chapter, I'm just going to up, just show you a GIF, okay? So this is a standing wave GIF, okay? It's gonna look like this. This is the exact drawing, okay? So if you want to define a cycle, pick an antinode. Antinode means maximum movement. So what is a cycle? Let's say I start my timing at the maximum position, going down, come back up again, that is one cycle. I repeat, uh, start from the top, go down, come up, one cycle. So let me count the cycles for you. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hopefully, you get what one cycle is. So, where is one quarter? If go down, come back up, is one. A quarter is half and then half again. So, I'll draw it here. This point P is an empty node. Okay, so we start from here. Let's say it's moving down. I actually don't really know where it's moving, but it doesn't matter. Go down, come up, travel back again. This position is one cycle. If I want half a cycle, it would be go down, come up here. This is half a cycle. So this one is T. This one is T over 2. Quarter, leh, quarter, quarter. Ah, quarter is here. Half of half. Lo. Half of the purple one. So here to here is T over 4. And that's how you will get your quarter cycle. So the question is asking you to sketch a line to show the possible quarter cycle. So that line could look like this. Meaning the point has moved from here to here. So again, you need to visualize the GIF. Uh, upgrade your memory RAM so that you can close your eye and think of this pattern in your brain tomorrow during the exam. Mm, stare at this a bit. So we want to draw this shape where this one is below. Okay, like that. Okay, so uh, teacher, how low I draw does not matter. Doesn't matter. It's one mark only. So I think to help my brain, because you know, I'm not the best at drawing. I have many talents. Drawing ain't one of them. What is your talent? What's your secret talent? 
Mm. Okay, anyway. Nah, something like this. Sure, I don't want to draw like that, can I? Sure, here's another option. Maybe your quarter cycle is not on the way down, it's on the way up. Sure, go up, come down, cycle back, one. So where is quarter? Quarter will be here to here, T over four. This one is T, which means your shape will look like this. Please don't draw two. This one or this one. Don't draw two. Just draw one. Don't be extra. Be just enough. Do I know which direction is about to go? I don't know. Because what they gave me was this pattern when it is flat. So it could be flat but on the way down or flat but on the way up. How I know? But all I know is quarter cycle later is either here or here. Alright, so that's what they mean by quarter cycle. You can also watch some recordings that we have done around stationary wave. It's already recorded. Right, what makes what makes not sure what you mean by when CRO turn on and turn off. The propeller question or I tell you what, thanks to your subscription and your support. I just need to search the code 9702 propeller. You see all the propeller? This one is out already. Ah, go watch this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or you find the relevant past year question and you Google the paper question. If it's an important example or a key example, we will have already recorded it. So ET Physics, thanks to your support and your views, have been quite popular in the 9702 region. Paper code. Which also allows you to search better. But the best way to search is still by question, the year, the variant, and the question number. Okay, so I'll stay on for about a minute or two because I gotta go soon. What is the meaning of life? I want to say number 42, but I don't know whether you learn you learn the I mean you know the meme or not the student I hated that most who are you because I don't remember hating anyone life is chill man no point hating anyone please don't hate yourself also okay how I feel about you is less important compared to how you feel about yourself all right let's look at the chat to wrap up today Yeah, all the best to people who are retaking. It's kind of hard. Um, to be honest, you should give yourself a year to learn everything. At least 10 months to a year. So if you're doing it in that less, um, you know, with significantly less amount of time, then uh, please be nice to yourself and try your best to do what you can. Yes, hitchhikers, I got you. Thanks. You watch the same stuff. Okay, so let me give you a summary about paper two. And you should go and watch the videos to cover all of this because Miss Lee today cannot will not be able to cover all. Okay. So for question one, we will generally expect either base unit, SI units, derived units. I don't know which one I am. Look, I can't tell the future. I'm just telling you what will commonly be asked, but not confirmed. Okay? Or they will ask uncertainty. They won't ask both. Will they? Yeah, they can ask both. Uncertainty. Okay? So someone asked just now about the significant figures of uncertainty. I guess I can just show you how that looks like. So when you write uncertainties right like for example something like this the absolute uncertainty must always be 1 sf and then when you write your answer your answer should follow the decimal point 
of the absolute uncertainty. So if this absolute uncertainty when written to 1 SF is 1 DP, then this one should be 1 DP. Okay, let's look at another example. So this page a lot of stuff. Okay, like for example, this one. So when you round this uncertainty, is 1 SF, 0 0.05. But 0 0.05 is also two decimal point. So when you write 2.1, you should follow the decimal point of 0 0.05. So step one, write this in 1 SF. Step two, follow the decimal point of your uncertainty. Okay? That's it in a nutshell. It's not, it's not really rocket science. Can one, all right? Okay, let's go back to... Where did I, there we go. So uncertainties, mainly paying attention to decimal points, sig fig identities. Okay. Uh, on the off chance, they could ask vector and drawing. If they don't ask here, they can ask in forces, they can ask in kinematics, projectile motion. They can ask you to calculate the change in momentum. There are many places to ask vectors because a lot of your physical quantities are vectors. So yeah, but make sure not to draw. So please bring a projector. Projector? Protractor, sorry, protractor. Okay, question two. Uh, normally they will ask some form of kinem Okay, look, I will put question two, question three, and question four maybe it will be a combination of your kinematics your stuva your stuvat or suvat or stuva equations your graphs your work energy power your forces and momentum All of this is a package deal. Do you have blind spots in your mechanics? Do you not know how to do kinematics? Do you not know how to interpret graphs, your distance, your displacement time, velocity time, acceleration time graph, all these got problem or not? Review videos. Do you have problem then leveling up to interpret momentum time, uh, KE against time, GPE against time? All this also will happen okay so a lot of times they will ask in graphs okay and then forces and momentum so all of this is together is a package deal it'd be pretty critical if you can't do any of it because you may not be able to answer a significant portion of the question all right and then sometimes this question four can be one of these but if they're feeling like it this one can branch out not that popular but we can definitely you know talk about spring and young modules by the way, these forces and momentum also include moment. There's a lot of examples already recorded, okay? Then um, question five and six, or normally question five or four, it depends on them, okay? So question five and four will be waves or superposition. So this one is easier to study because the questions are not very like, I can relate this to this, but I can also relate this to that, but I can also relate this way, okay? Because wave, generally speaking, after you are done with the properties, you need to know how to read the CRO, including amplitude, intensity. You need to know the Doppler effect. And you need to know your malus, malus law, polarization. Sure, you could be asked to memorize some EM wave. Can they combine? Can we did a combination question just as a start of today? Okay. Superposition, standing or stationary wave, interference, double slit interference, and diffraction grating. So if you notice that there are certain things that you don't know, there's a reason why Miss Ellie and I put up a library of videos for you. I'm sure you're independent enough and don't need us to hold your hand. You'll be fun. Watch the video, okay? 
But if you a lot haven't cover, then don't cover all lah. Not possible. Do what you can. Question six: Circuits. This one can be anything. So if you haven't been doing circuits question, uh, maybe do the simple ones. And if it's too complicated, it's totally fine to just let it go. But I've looked at the May June two two papers. All the circuit questions are very easy, very straightforward. All okay. All right. Can be anything lah. And question seven is nuclear physics. Nuclear physics also pretty straightforward. All right. So you can speed run by uh, watching the videos. But if you are starting from nothing, which hopefully is not the case for you, uh, it will be very challenging to do all. So be reasonable with yourself. Hopefully you have some kind of blind spots that you identify and maybe you want to work on. But uh, I would highly recommend that uh, you rest early before your paper. Okay, and these are generally what people are more familiar with. Cause when you started here, your brain still fresh, can take in new information. By the time you reach here, you may be tired. Okay, this these two, especially question six, needs a lot of time to practice. But the good news is, paper two is generally not that difficult. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Uh, I've been live for almost two hours, so I've recently. I'm I'm I've recently caught COVID. Okay, it's the second time that I was infected by COVID, and I find that it's harder for me to talk for long periods of time. Like I find it hard to breathe. So I hope that if you've caught the bug before, that you have better symptoms than I do, and also that you will stay safe and not get the virus, especially during this time when you're sitting for exam, because it will uh, affect you and your exam. So be be sure to take care of yourself. All right. And I think the important thing here to understand is that we are all our own human beings, right? And we owe it to ourselves to try our best, but we also owe it to ourselves to be kind to ourselves and the people around us. We want to be smart and do well so that we can be helpful, but we also must know when to stop and say we need a break. So with that in mind, I also need a break now, and so do you, because it's been two hours. And yeah. Stay sane. We will recover and we will be fine and everything is going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. It may be a bit painful. Certain things may be difficult, but you are also capable. And remember that the world is good. Lah. So be that good in the world and not the bad. All right. So I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. Knowing how this AMA works definitely is a limitation, right? So maybe I'm just here on online to let the community talk to each other and, uh, but yes, I'm sorry if I didn't cover all of your stuff. I wish you all the best. A lot of things is already recorded for you for that reason. And you'll be fine. Okay? All right. Thanks for showing up. I'll see you for the AMA Ask Me Anything or live stream for paper one. When will it be? I don't know. I hope I don't catch COVID again, but I don't know. So do take care and thank you. And for, let me see if there's any other notes. Yeah. Okay. I can't really share, I can't really share the notes with anyone at the moment due to certain limitations. Okay. But uh, I believe that watching the video and pressing pause and taking a screenshot works. <laughs> Okay, my notes are the notes that we write on. There is nothing else. And it consists of some questions which are past year questions. So if you follow along the channel, it's enough. Okay, so I'm sorry. And thank you, Busy Inverse, for that shout out. Samantha, thank you for showing up. Um, thank you, Anling. XOXY. Yes, you stay safe too. All right, so all the best tomorrow. Get enough sleep, get enough rest. Help a friend, help yourself. Remember to be kind. All right, whenever you want to do something, just ask yourself, is it making the world a bit better? Net positive gain is always the best. All right, I'll end the stream here. Thank you so much for showing up. Miss Ellie and I, Miss Ellie and I are basically, I thought long time never upload video. Nobody will show up one. Maybe two people. Oh, but got so many people. So we love you guys too. Stay safe, stay sane. I'll see you in the next round. All the best. Bye-bye.